just over 1% in the red. We had a bit of euphoria with regards to the EU summit that filtered through slightly into Asia this morning, but uh, Europe mark, European markets under pressure today. We've got South African markets under pressure. Again, it is all about decisive action. We sound like broken records. Yeah, we do. <laughs> it's definitely European fatigue uh, creeping in here, and maybe that's getting to the traders as well. They just hear anything to do with Europe and they start selling. Mm. And that's maybe why they're, I'm quite surprised it's across the board today. There's only four yeah. stocks in the green. Exactly. Well, let's touch on some of them. Massmart is up half a percent. SAB Miller up around one percent. Any specific reason uh, that we saw a bit of positivity in these two stocks? Maybe only with SAB Miller. I could only think that perhaps is uh, the the rand weakness that we've seen is mm. uh, maybe just uh, asked a few fund managers to reassess the valuation there. But I can't uh, I can't pick up a distinct theme. Um, but uh, apart from that, it's just generally negative at this point. Telcom under pressure um, for the most part of this year. One of those stocks that even came out with um, some bad numbers. Uh, KT a Corporation, a Korean company, wanting to acquire 20% stake in Telcom. We keep talking about where to from here for Telcom, and it yes. seems that other companies are finding value in South African assets. assets shouldn't we as well? Well, perhaps. I think uh, KT's, a, KT's a big player and they're looking at doing this 20% uh, acquisition, although it's only in a memorandum of understanding. So they go through this diagnostics review where they look at the company's objectives and how they intend to achieve them and things like culture and that I think comes into it as well. And I just can't see, uh, I, I'm not particularly bullish that a company like KT are going to get involved with Telcom. Uh, there's still some big constraints around how, how Telcom can, can manage their employees and, and their workforce where they, where they lack the productivity. Um, so I'm not too bullish on it, but let's see what, uh, what comes of so it. So you're waiting for more news, just not only a memorandum of understanding. They said they'd keep their shareholders updated yeah. every six weeks, yes. Uh, with regards to SAPI, I'm out with also a statement that more job losses coming <coughs> to the fore. We just keep seeing consolidation within the space. Something's got to give at some point. Mondi has also been one of those very volatile stocks this, uh, this year. Is the paper industry even an option right now? And if it were, was, would SAPI be the one? Um, I'd, I'm not very optimistic. I think there's a, there's a seriously structural trend against uh, paper producers at this point. And this uh, debate around the jobs, they're talking about 1,200 jobs being lost. The unions are saying it's on the cards and uh, the management of SAPI is saying we've still got to go through the, the negotiation process and the re restructuring. So we, w the company hasn't said we, we're axing 1,200 jobs but the unions uh, already ev alerting everyone to the fact that it is going to happen. So a bit of conflict there but again you know a paper long term is it, is it really viable uh, with with the rise of digital media um, I personally wouldn't be very bullish on SAPI and I know for a fact that some hedge fund managers have been shorting the company for a couple of years so um, perhaps if you're a short seller Telcom and SAPI are, my, are certainly my picks. How many interesting story out today cancelling or looking to cancel its London listing? What would, would assume that the price is actually set in London and then we piggyback off that? It seems that the opposite is happening in a sense, given the fact that we're seeing this news today. How many is down to a half percent, but on the back of a much weaker gold price today? Yes, yes. well, I, I always thought that the, uh, the price was set in London, uh, being one of the big financial capitals of the world. And a lot of resource counters that are listed in South Africa are listed there as well. So very interesting to see that they're coming out that they're saying that the listing's not, it's, it's not really necessary for their purposes. Um, and we know that they've got the ADR program in the States. And that's perhaps where they think that the, the share price is being set, uh, as well as the JSC. So to them, uh, London's goodbye. With regards to the re-weighting of uh, the top 40, Arsenal Missile is going to be off the top 40. It's down two and a quarter of a percent. It's going to be replaced by British American Tobacco, which is, I'm sure, a lot of good news for investors out there wanting exposure to BTI. Yes, absolutely. And uh, British to American Tobacco is going to be the giant in the JSC. I think it's going to come in at number one. So Oslo Mittal falls away. It's also interesting to see what Kumba Ainor and Oslo are doing to each other in the run-up to this big decision at the courts. Kumba flat today, of course. Yeah, which is, uh, you could view as positive versus their Oslo Mittal. So uh, everyone wait waits with bated breath as to what the judge how the judge rules on that case and whether or not Arsenal can still enjoy that 3% uh, margin uh, input that they enjoy from, from uh, Kumba at the moment.